This is the gear cutter that I made in the first video. And then in the second video, I used it to cut this, uh, the teeth on this wheel. And on this video, I'm going to cross out the wheel or make the spokes. Uh, there's about a million different ways to spoke a wheel. This is just how I did it. I used uh, two different uh, uh, jigs. So that one there, the brass one. It's normally, these are normally used by themselves, but I combined them together to do it the way that I, that I find to like it. So here, let's take a look at it. All right, let's start off with a little dicum here, if I can get it to stay steady for a second here. And we'll let it dry for a little bit. And then I'm gonna put it on a, put it on a bench block here. There we go. And you, we're gonna scribe some circles on it now. We gotta be careful not to scribe too heavy because uh, we're gonna have to, you don't wanna have to sand these lines out of here later at the end. So uh, I've got a little uh, trumpet that I built on there to find the center hole. That center hole is 3 16 Now we'll do the outer one. Once again, uh, very light lines, just enough to crack the, uh, the dicum up uh, so that you can see the line. Now I'm adding some double-sided tape here because we're gonna put the wheel on there. Now you'll see I've got a 1 16th, or it's got a center pin there and now I've pulled it out. It's in its position. We use an eighth inch uh, uh, pins there and those allow me to mark the areas that I want for the skinny part of my uh, uh, arms or spokes let's call them. So now we've got those all marked up. Now we're putting in a, that piece there is, takes it right to the center. So now the bottom part of that little jig is on the center and then it's up on that eighth inch mark. And we'll do that all the way around the wheel. Once again, being careful not to make them too dark, but you want to make sure you can see them good. Now, Wilding, who made the uh, the brass jig that I'm using, uh, it's in his eight eight day clock uh, book. It, you'll also find it written about uh, by uh, uh, W. R. Smith in his grasshopper clock and in his uh, skeleton clock. The other plate comes out of Malcolm Wilde's book on. Uh, I, uh, horology and uh, uh, gear cutting and uh, very handy there you go there's the final product now we're over at the drill press and uh, we're going to use this stone uh, to put a, a, a zero rake on the back of the cutting edge of this uh, drill bit just a little swipe on the back there just brighten it up enough brass has a tendency you want to catch with uh, drill bits and this will stop it from catching I'm over again, I'm drilling the holes. You can notice I'm drilling the second set of holes here because the first set I forgot to turn the camera on. Yeah, so there you go. When I start cutting this this, uh, this crossing out here, uh, I'm gonna be going pretty fast. So I wanted to show you what it looks like. Uh, you're not gonna see any of this stuff here, but I'm using a German made uh, uh, piercing saw with a four inch throat. It's pretty pretty sturdy saw. I like it. It's a good one. Uh, piercing saws are really good skill to know how to how to do, uh, and uh, there's plenty of videos on uh, YouTube about how to do it. I use this uh, candle here as a, a way to uh, lubricate the blade while I'm cutting. And uh, this is a good one-inch piece of oak. It's in my vise and I, it's out far enough to get me away from the table so that I can get in there under it. I got the magnifying light there and then another light over there to give me some top light. Seeing is the most important thing for me. Uh, remember, there's a million ways to do this. This just happens to be the way I do it. Uh, and I find that with that magnifying light in front of me, I can't blow the filings away to see right. So I've took a clear piece of hose. Yeah, like that one there, yeah, with a piece of brass hose, and that's the airbrush hose and a piece of wire in there. I just clip the wire to the edge. That lets me bend the hose to where I need it and keep the filings out of the way. And that's pretty much the way I do it. Uh, I like Once again, you should look at the videos on uh, YouTube. I use this uh, uh, valve, just crack it open. You don't need much air at all. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to have it. I'm going to speed it up here a little bit. But let me give you a look at uh, uh, some of the clips of me cutting it out. 
Okay, here's a spirited, spirited up look at uh, cutting it there. I'm using Pike Jeweler saw blades. The information's on the screen there for you. Uh, I try to keep within about a 30th second of an inch to the line. And uh, the one reason why I like these uh, templates, uh, you can see there's only two corners. Here's the first corner here that I'm coming to, but the blades are rounded in the back, so that getting around the corners is not really that hard. Probably the best thing uh, for learning this stuff is uh, experience. Experience is the real teacher. And uh, I try to keep my blade vertical while I'm doing all this and uh, uh, just keep going. All right, there we go, coming to the end here. We'll get that first piece out of there. Yeah, yeah there you go, and I'll jump ahead here. I don't, you don't need to watch the whole thing, uh, but you get the basic idea of how it works. And there's what it looked like when I was finally done. And so let me uh, take you over and uh, we'll get you all set up and I'll show you how I'm gonna file this thing. I use this big vise with a set of jaws. I didn't make these jaws, they're rubber. Uh, I bought them, they were cheap enough. And uh, I'm not using the file, uh, the real uh, wheel here, because the real wheel's actually done. I came back and decided I need to show you a little bit of how I do the filing. The filing, I do it so fast you don't get to see it. But uh, there's a, I use uh, two different methods when I do it. Uh, <laughs> And I keep my files, I, I color code them. I, I just dip them in modeling paint so I know what number file I'm using. I'm using somewhere between a zero and a four, uh, but they're all dipped in there because uh, you know, I can't see the numbers that well and I don't want to pick up the wrong file. But uh, the, first, uh, the first move that I use is, is your draw filing. This is the one you use the most. Very small movements like that, but you're drawing it towards you. And that's cross filing. Cross filing takes away more meat, so you don't use it too often. And sometimes I use a third method, which is a cross file with a, a draw file mixture. You see how I'm pulling it down like that? Um, that's usually when I'm getting near the end and I just want to get a good look, good finish on there. But anyway, that's how I uh, end up doing my filing on, uh, on these uh, things here. And uh, this is the uh, modified square file. You'll see that I just uh, took a, a belt sander and took off the, uh, the uh, grit on the file so that I have a safe edge. And I changed the uh, uh, angle a little bit so it fits right in the corner there. And uh, uh, so when I'm, uh, when I'm uh, got everything moving pretty fast and I tell you the square file, that's the one that I was using. All right, let's go ahead and get started on all this. All right, we're starting out with a number zero crossing file to get, that's the coarsest uh, file that I use. Uh, just trying to get down closer to the line. Just get rid of all the saw marks, things like that. Yeah, get in there good and get it, uh, there was that modified square uh, file. Uh, no, get it in with number two now, clean it up a little bit. That one corner I'm working on right now is really buggered up. I didn't get in there with the saw very well. So that'll take a little bit of work. Yeah, yeah that corner's going to take a little work. And yeah, there we go. Now you can see I've gone over to a half round. I try to finish it up with that number four half round. It lets me get into the corners nicely and uh, I got the little flat part to get on my, uh, my spokes. I like to move the wheel around now and again take a good look at it. So now we're getting into that corner, that hard corner there. Sorry you can't see it too good but I'm not much of a cameraman I guess. Get in close there. That half round does a good job. Now, when you turn it around like this and you look at it without the uh, the dicum, you know now you get an idea of how your flow is going on your line. Is your line flowing correctly? So I'm still using that half round and just kind of cleaning up areas, trying to keep the flow working. 
Now I'm going to use uh, three different uh, grip sandpapers <coughs> just to kind of polish up the edges there. The edges are all nice and crisp and flat and uh, it's just a way to polish them up a little bit. <coughs> there, that looks good. That's starting to look better. There we go. And this will be the 800. The 800 will take care of the end of it. you got to remember to keep it in uh, now we're ready to clean it up with the lacquer thinners again. Get that die come off and get any sanding uh, grit or anything off there that you want to get off. Now we're over and doing a little sanding. I got a piece of glass under there and I start with 400 and work up to 1000 and then finally finish it off with the 1500 uh, just to get it all nice and flat. Well there goes the uh, polishing. I'm using, I'm set up at about uh, 3400 RPM and uh, there's the uh, info on what I'm using. I wear gloves because uh, brass polish is better when it's warm. So I would get it up nice and warm and then uh, polish it. Uh, there we go, back into the lacquer thinners, get the last of the polish off. You don't want any of that uh, polish on there uh, when you're done. Yeah, this will finish up the wheel here and get all of, everything off of it. I want to thank you all for watching and I hope you'll uh, come back for the next one uh, and I'll build a, uh, a lantern pinion too and depth it with this gear. Hope to see you next time. Bye now.